as promised in my previous video i'm going to show you how to make this delicious millet tozafi this is the tozafi i paired with my one pot ayoyo soup if you've not seen that video i'll link it up here so that you go and check it out millet is one versatile ingredient that can be used in so many different ways you can use millet to prepare so many different types of porridge for breakfast including burger, cocoa, uh, burkina, there's so many of them. You can use it for tozafi, you can use it for millet banku. There's so many recipes that you can actually use millet for. So it's one versatile ingredient that I always have in my kitchen. If it's your first time visiting my channel, welcome and I'm very glad to have you here. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that you will be seeing these delicious recipes all the time. Let's go ahead and let me show you how I prepared this tozafi. Look at that beauty. This is Lamy Cooks and welcome to my channel. I'll need some millet flour. So I'll put the exact measurement in the description box down below so make sure you check it out. I'll also need some tamarind paste. Note that traditionally you use the fermented water from your cocoa mixture. However, if you don't have it, you can use the tamarind paste. And then some cassava flour, coconut. This is optional, but I prefer to add it to my uh, millet tozafi because I keep mine for long, so it helps with the texture. But traditionally, you don't add coconut. So to my pot, I'm going to soak my tamarind paste for about six to eight hours if you can do overnight amazing it all depends on how sour you want your uh, millet to azafi to taste once the tamarind paste is soaked for a few hours i will strain it and then we'll use the liquid to prepare the to azafi as i said earlier the fermented water from your cocoa mixture is what we use to prepare this tozafi. However, if you don't have it, the tamarind water works well. According to your taste and preference, if you don't want it to sour, you can add water just to dilute it a little bit. I'll now go ahead and prepare my porridge mixture and set it aside. So I'll add about 150 grams of the millet flour to about 700 ml of water. I'll put the exact measurement in the description box down below. Guys, normally we eyeball all this, but I took the time to put measurement to it. So it's easy for people who haven't actually prepared tozafi before. So I'll mix it and then I'll set it aside. To my pot, I'll go ahead and add my tamarind water. This is about 1.5 ml. Um, I'll let it boil and then I'll go ahead and add the mixture of millet and water to it. If you decide to cover your pot, make sure you keep an eye because of the sourness of the tamarind paste, it can boil over. Once it starts boiling, I'll go ahead and add my porridge mixture and then I'll give it a stir to get this porridge-like consistency. And then I'll leave it to boil before we start preparing the tozafi. You will need this to come to a rolling boil, so it has to be boiling properly before you start preparing your tozafi. That's why it's called diehu because you have to make sure it's boiling. So I'll fetch some of the porridge on the side and then we'll start preparing the tozafi. On a good day when you have people around, you have one person putting the millet flour for you gradually so it cooks really well and you have a smooth consistency. But here's the case, I'm doing it by myself so I have to do all together. So I'm going to add the millet flour and then the cassava flour just a little as I said I just needed a little just to give it that consistency because I usually cook my tozafi and then I keep it in the fridge so the, the, the cassava flour helps with that texture for me but traditionally you don't have to add it when you don't add I find that if you don't add the coconte the cassava flour it tends to be a bit hard especially if you have to keep it for a few days so as you can see, I'm adding it gradually and then stirring it at the same time. 
It is going to be basically the technique for preparing banku. So the way you prepare your banku, just a little extra technique that goes with the two zafi. That is the same way. So just stirring and stir it against the pot as you go until all the lumps are broken and you get a smooth consistency if you can. Because what happens with millet to zafi is if it's not properly dried, you don't get it as smooth as you want. So make sure you stir it fast as well so that you can break all the lumps in it. After stirring it for about 10 minutes and with a little bit of hand muscle exercise, <laughs> this is the consistency, this is the smoothness level I've been able to achieve. If you're enjoying this video so far and you like what I do, make sure you give me a big thumbs up. Just click on that like button for me. This is the extra skill that you need for Tozafi that you don't usually use for your banku. The reason being that the tozafi is soft, is a, is a soft one compared to banku, so you can actually turn it this way. At this stage, I'll start adding my porridge gradually. So here I'm adding about two cups of um, the porridge that I set aside. As you can see, it's boiling. Guys, make sure your tozafi is always on fire, like it's always boiling because if you reduce the heat, it will affect the texture of the tozavi. So make sure the heat is at least on medium so it's boiling all the time. You can see how when I added the porridge, it was boiling immediately. This is the type of heat or the type of temperature you need. I'm going to mix it gradually until the porridge mixes well with the tozavi. I'll go ahead and mix it properly, making sure everything is well combined. Using the same skill and technique, I'll make sure it's properly mixed. Now, for most people, this is the perfect texture for their tozafi. However, because I'm going to keep mine in the fridge for about a week, I usually make sure it's a little bit more soft than this one. So again, it's according to how soft you want your tozafi to look. So I'm going to go ahead and add some more porridge. I'm just going to add about one cup just on the top and cover it and let it cook for about five minutes just to make sure it's cooked properly. Then I'll come back to it and turn it again. This is the proper dieru. It's boiling. So I'm just going to turn it now and then the tozafi is ready. Guys, this is the same method you use for your regular tozafi. It's just the only difference is for this one is the fermented water that you use to prepare it. Tozafi, you use your regular water and then you use your corn flour and then your cassava flour mixture. Tozafi is ready. Look at that yumminess. If you're going to eat your tozafi in the next day or two, make sure you make yours a bit more firm, which means do not add more porridge to your tozafi. And also you can decide not to add the kokonte. I make mine soft because I keep it for days, for about five to six days. And also I add the kokonte just to help with the texture. So if you are eating your tozafi in the next day or two, you don't need to make all that. Tozafi is ready and I'm now going to portion it. Sorry, I just realized when I was editing that my camera didn't capture everything when I was portioning my Tozafi. 
It's just the same method like you're preparing your banku or you are your kokonte. The only difference is this is soft, so you need a support. So I usually put my plastic bag or whatever I'm using in a calabash or a small bowl because this is really soft. And guys, be careful because this is soft, you can tend to bend yourself easily. So this is where most kitchen accidents happen. So just be careful when you are portioning your toes off it because it's soft. It's softer than um, your regular banku. Once I put it in the plastic, in the calabash or the bowl that it's holding it, I'll just gather the tip and twist it around and then if possible, I'll just tie it. Thank you so much for watching this video till now. If you've watched till now and you've not clicked on the like button, please make sure you do so now. And if you're not subscribed to this channel, make sure you hit on the subscribe button. And also don't forget to click on the notification bell so that anytime I upload a video, you will be notified. Don't keep this recipe to yourself. Make sure you share with your family and friends as well on your WhatsApp, your social media pages. Until I come your way with another yummy delicious recipe. Stay tuned. Be blessed. Bye.